This is the newbie chair from Boolies that I'm sitting on right now. Yes, it's called the newbie. It's a bit of a weird name, especially for the gamers out there. But look, it's an office chair. No tacky gamer logos, no RGB, no built-in fans. Hi guys, I'm Matt and welcome to Kit Guru. So then, we've seen the comments from the Anti-Gaming Chair Brigade and thought you'd like to see a review of a proper office chair. So here we have the newbie from Boolies. It's a simple looking, no nonsense, very straight to the point chair, which according to Boolies website, is perfectly tailored for small spaces without compromising on comfort or functionality, something that we'll put to the test in this video. It comes in two sizes, the Newbie, which is the model that I'm going to focus on in this review, and then the Newbie Lite. The latter is a bit wider, has a shorter backrest, and an overall lower weight capacity. The Lite model will set you back £379.99 when it's at its full price recommended retail price, whereas the taller chair is £399.99p. However, both are currently on sale for £309.99p if you use Boolie's Spring Sale promo code. They always seem to have a sale of some sort going on, kind of like DFS. Let's have a look at what your £310 gets you and talk about how it's handled me sitting on it for the past few weeks. As far as design goes, I think simplicity is probably the best word I can use to describe how this chair looks. It's available in two different coloured polymer fabric finishes. The charcoal colour on the chair that Boolies have sent me out for a review and then there's a lighter beige option as well. It's got a very straightforward design with both the backrest and the seat base being fully covered in fabric. There's no headrest on the newbie. The lack of one kind of jumped out to me when I first built the chair. I'm so used to seeing chairs that have them that it looked a bit strange to see a chair without one. I'll talk about how that felt sitting on it later in the video. The backrest has quite a contoured design that curves around at the edges as well as outwards towards the top. The Boolies website states that that design of that backrest was refined based on the feedback of thousands of individuals. The seat base is finished in the same fabric as the backrest. It's very simple and straightforward, which is kind of a theme of this video. It's not got much contouring to look at, but it does contain what Boolies call BioCurve sponge padding, which is a cold cured foam which has been designed to distribute weight evenly across the chair. Again, I'll talk more about how comfortable the thing is later on. The simplicity of the chair continues in the armrests. They're pretty standard stuff. They've only got height adjustability, that's it. They're made from a soft plastic material and they are comfortable, but if you need to rotate them or move them forwards or backwards, then you're gonna be out of luck. There's barely any branding on the chair at all. The only bit is found on the bottom of the back side of the backrest in the shape of a smallish, sleek looking Boolies logo sitting on a plastic base section. I like this simple and minimal approach to branding, as I've said in previous reviews. It suits a chair designed for an office or work environment quite well, I think. The controls are the usual levers and twisty knobs found underneath the seat base. There's nothing out of the ordinary to tell you about with them, to be honest. The handles are plastic and they can sometimes be a bit of a pain to reach while you're sitting on the chair and trying to adjust it. Speaking of adjustability, it's an area where the newbie both does well in some regards and then is a bit disappointing in others. You've got the standard stuff like height adjustment. The seat height has a range of 43.5 to 54.5 centimetres. The class 4 gas lift supports weights of up to 120 kilograms. The backrest reclines by 27 degrees and it can be locked at three different angles. I would have liked to have seen a few more there, but you get the three. And they all feel quite weird due to the chair not having a headrest. There's also different levels of tilt tension, so you can stop yourself feeling like you're going to fall off it when you recline. The armrests, as I mentioned earlier, only have height adjustment. and They go from 62.5 centimetres to 80 centimetres off the floor. You can choose to install them at varying widths but that's when you put the chair together and it's not something you can adjust on the fly. There's no lumbar support. There isn't any built into the chair at all and Boolies don't include any sort of additional pillows or additional back supports of any kind. The newbie does, however, have both seat depth adjustment and forward tilt adjustment of the seat base. 
I was really, really pleased to see this. Seat depth adjustment is one of the most important things for getting comfortable on a chair, for me anyway, and I miss it a lot when I sit on a chair that doesn't have it. The seat depth on this thing can be adjusted from 46.5 to 52.5 centimeters, and then the seat base itself can be angled forward by four degrees. These two things alone take the comfort up a fair bit. They're very important things to look for in an ergonomic chair, and they honestly make a big, big difference when adjusting any chair to suit your body shape or size. I've used the Newbie for both work and gaming, which admittedly those two kind of cross paths quite a lot for me, and I've been mostly pleased with it. The seat base padding is good. It's soft and comfortable, but it still does provide a good amount of support underneath your legs. It's got enough rigidity that I don't have any concerns about the padding sinking or losing its form over the long term, but that is me guessing a little bit. The only true way to know would be to use this thing every day for a year or so. Now, I know I already mentioned it, but the seat depth adjustment again, it was really vital in me setting up this chair to sit correctly. At its most shallow setting, I felt like I was sitting way too far forward and like I was kind of on the edge of the front of the chair. Adjusting it to the maximum depth made a world of difference and I found it much, much more comfortable. The armrests are a little disappointing. They don't go quite high enough for me, which I have found to be the case on other chairs in the past. Maybe I've just got really short upper arms, who knows. I have to mention the lack of a headrest again and the height of the backrest in general. Using this chair made me realise how much I miss the shoulder support. And when reclining, the lack of a headrest is very, very noticeable. It's a chair that is definitely designed for sitting upright and not lounging back and relaxing, which does make sense as, as its main purpose is exactly that, work. It is comfortable enough to sit on for long periods of time and I haven't had any leg fatigue at all. I feel the newbie excels in that area, in the leg support, so in the leg comfort sort of area. The padding is soft on the back of the legs and that angle adjustment helps with the circulation to your lower legs. I found it really comfortable from the waist down. Building the chair was quite simple and it didn't take me too long. The armrests need to be attached to the seat. Then the wheels are inserted onto the five spoke base. Then you stick those two together with the gas lift. And then finally you attach the backrest or the top of the chair to the bottom of the chair. There were parts that were a bit fiddly, like holding the backrest in place while screwing it to the base. So a second pair of hands would help out to be fair, but overall it wasn't really a difficult process and it shouldn't give anyone too much trouble. The overall build quality of the newbie is okay. I've seen better chairs and I've seen worse chairs. Once assembled, the backrest feels sturdy and it feels well connected to the base of the chair. The seat base itself does move a little bit and it has a bit of rattle when you adjust the seat depth, when it's not at its minimum. It feels like that's the default setting and it's locked in more when it's at its minimum. But if you adjust it out, the seat gets a bit of a wobble and a bit of a rattle on the go. The armrests don't wobble that much at all, mainly due to them not having much in the way of adjustability. Less moving parts means less rattle, I guess. The gas lift feels great. It's smooth and it's relatively quiet as has been the case with all of the Bullies chairs that I've looked at. The actual seat itself is well made, the seat base. It's well padded. The fabric feels good quality and feels quite durable. The same can be said for the backrest, although it's not quite as padded as the seat base, but it still does have that same good quality feel to it. The five spoke base is disappointingly made of plastic, nylon plastic, some sort of plastic material. A common theme found on office chairs, to be honest, but I do think this should be metal. It's a bit of a cop out to charge that much and then still use plastic. The casters are 60 mil and they're made from PU. They feel and work pretty good, just like all the other Bullies chairs that I've looked at. The newbie glides really well on hard floor and it gets a bit bogged down on carpet, just like any chair, to be honest. Overall, and as I said at the start of this section, the build quality is okay. The fabric finish is great, as is the padding but there is a tiny bit of rattle here and there. So the newbie from Bullies, it's a simple chair that I like certain parts of, but was disappointed with others. The comfort is great. I could sit on it for hours and still feel as good as when I first sat down. The adjustability is okay. I really like the adjustable seat depth and the forward tilt. Chairs like this 100% need those adjustments. I don't like that there isn't any headrest, even on this bigger version, 
The backrest doesn't go very high up my back and when leaning back you do feel the need for some extra support for the shoulders and for the neck. The build quality is okay but could be better. The chair feels sturdy on the most part but does rattle slightly here and there. And this isn't a, a chair that I'd choose for a gaming setup at all but if you have a separate work setup either at home or in the office somewhere then this would work well for that especially for someone with a bit of a smaller build than me. And then finally, there's the price. It's just too expensive. 400 quid when it's not on sale and 310 quid at the moment. I think about 250 quid but would be a fair price given that it uses plastic in the base. If they were to stick a headrest on, I could overlook that and then I think 310 quid might be about right. But as it is, I think it's just a little bit much for what you get. Anyway, guys, that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave me a like down below if you did. Don't forget to subscribe to Kit Guru to keep up with the latest PC gaming news and reviews. And if you go down below the video, you'll find links to our Patreon page, our Discord server and our website, and then to our merch store to buy yourself a hoodie or a t-shirt if you want to. Anyway guys, I've been Matt. This has been the newbie office chair from Booties. I'll speak to you in the next one. See you later.